Well, it might have taken over 15 years, but Elder Scrolls is finally taking us home. From June 6th, the legendary province of Morrowind will be open for exploration in Elder Scrolls Online. But of course, this won't be an easy homecoming, as you'll very quickly find out. By dawn and dusk, evil creeps through the shadows of my beloved Vardenfell. But an outlander arrives to aid my people, just as I have foreseen. And that outlander she's talking about, or, you know, the Daedric prince who's speaking through her is talking about, well, it just so happens to be you. And, like we've come to expect from every Elder Scrolls game, where you go, trouble follows. Whether that's a violent river troll, a surprisingly aggressive spider type thing, or even what appears to be a very angry pile of rocks, you'd better be prepared to fight. So we've summoned up all our best tips on how to get the most out of Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind. Now if you haven't played Elder Scrolls Online recently, or even at all, you might not have the greatest opinion of the game. But since its launch three years ago, ESO has actually blossomed into a pretty great little MMO. Now, first up, it might seem obvious, but the way shrines dotted throughout Morrowind are by far the fastest way to get around. Forget horsing around on your mount. Get it? Horsing? Anyway, way shrines might cost you a little bit of money, but they'll save you a lot of time. To fast travel, you'll need to open your map and find the way shrine that's nearest to where you're going. Then you'll perform a slightly dramatic and somewhat galactic piece of interpretive dance before being whisked away to your destination. Of course, you can also use our old favourite, the Silt Strider, to get around too. Our next tip is to try and play the game with a friend if you can. Now, it's another tip that sounds pretty obvious, but the game is multiplayer, so it's a lot more fun with somebody by your side. Except, of course, when something like this happens. It also makes fighting monsters a lot easier, especially since most of them are pretty good at ambushing you. The last thing you want when a Nick sound has you in a death grip from behind is to try and fight it off yourself. Our third tip is to try as many different abilities as you can when you first start playing. Since they level up as you gain XP, even if you don't use them, it still means you're keeping your skill lines open for later. It's also worth noting what the best traits of your character's race are, as they'll help you choose abilities which work alongside them. And, of course, once you've figured out which abilities you really like, you'll then be able to morph them into much more powerful versions. As for our next tip, well, it's a big one. How to, quite literally, get away with murder. Okay, so really it's more about avoiding bounties after you've killed someone you shouldn't have or indulged your kleptomaniac side. After all, who wouldn't want a recipe for mint chai? Now, if you want to keep your loot, you'll have to launder it at an outlaw's refuge. But if you get caught by a guard on the way, he'll force you to pay a bounty and then confiscate everything you've stolen. However, you'll then be completely free to go after he's done that. Of course, he's pretty rude about it, actually. Fine. Now get your stick away from me. Lastly, don't be worried if you think you've killed a monster and it looks like it's coming back to life. While we did secretly hope that Bethesda had included zombies in the Elder Scrolls Online, it turns out that it's just a bug on a bug. Pretty ironic, don't you think? Well, that's all from us for now. Hopefully you're ready to dive into the game. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next week.